Hey, how's it going, everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm joined with my co-host, Hannah. Hannah, how are you today? Good. How are you, Brad? I am doing good. Every single week, we provide short, simple tips to start, grow, and scale your business. What are we talking about today, Hannah? Yeah, so last week, we spoke about starting your business, um, finding your niche, what you're passionate about. And today, we're going to go into a little bit about the once you start encountering those hard parts, how can we pivot? Yeah, and that's one thing that for sure for me, and when you start doing any type of marketing online, whether you've done it in the past, you're doing it now, or you're thinking about doing it, is your message when you start posting things on social media, when you start sending emails, when you make a website, it's not going to be right the first time, most likely. You're not going to get good reactions and everybody loves it and goes and buys from you. You got to pivot your messaging, pivot your marketing, pivot what you're saying, what you're doing. So we'll cover that today and just break it down for you to make it easy for you to pivot so you can get those changes done right away. All right. So you found your niche. You found the industry you want to start with. But now what? Like, what are your next steps in just getting started? That's what we need to cover first here. Well, I think that first would be having a website so and posting on social media and especially having the website once you start posting on social media so you can start driving traffic to that. Um, and hopefully what you choose is something you're passionate about. So when it comes to content, I feel like think about the things you enjoy consuming what if you're watching other content in that niche that you chose mm. what do you like about other content how can you make yours a little different because clearly you like the message that they're sending in the way yeah. that they're delivering that content so thinking of ways you kind of have to get creative i think i think that's definitely a part of pivoting yeah and then also i mean you got so many things you have to think about a logo and when you make your website, what do you write and put on your website? Um, and then what do you actually start posting about? And so since you found something you're passionate about, hopefully for your business, you're going to start posting things about that. Now, whether you're an expert or not, you're going to, you know, maybe you're just learning, you're just starting out in this industry. You're going to feel that imposter syndrome, but really you have to maybe talk about your journey and learning it, I think is a good key. So you got to think about your logo, your website, and then think about what you're going to talk about, whether it's your journey or if you're already knowledgeable about it, what you should be you know, teaching people and helping people with. So, but that's what we want to talk about today. What if you make the wrong logo or choose the wrong domain mm -hmm. name? Then what? Right? Right. Those are very critical technical things. Yeah. And that's what I see. So I say, start with something you like, you know, a lot of people are going to remember your name more than your business name. So you can change your business name and your logo later on. And so I always suggest when you are starting to start off as a personal brand or personal branding on social media, you know, I have automation links for our business, but I also have Brad Smith because people remember Brad Smith over automation links, show your face, uh, make it personal so people remember. Then you let's say you go a month or two and you want to change your domain or change your logo or change your colors or change what you're talking about. It's that much easier um, to go pivot and change that um, once once you get to a certain point where you say, hey, I'm not happy. You know, I thought this was cool, but I found something that's better. I'm going to change it. Yeah. So, so on the topic of domains, um, you know, there's different domains. So there's your business name and then .com or .org. Which one of those would you recommend to people? I always recommend .com. You know, nowadays they've got so many out there, .ai, .co. If you can find, you know, almost something longer, because you're not going to find a one or two word domain, most likely. Like I can't find bradsmith.com. So what I did was I found bradsmithcoaching.com. So a lot of people aren't going to be typing that out, but if they do type it out, they're always going to put the .com. It's just natural instinct. Um, so right. you can make it a little longer nowadays. People will be clicking on that link in your bio. They'll be clicking on it from emails. So you don't have to worry so much about really getting a short domain and worrying about the .ai or .co. Do a little bit longer domain. Um, and also you want to think about keywords in there. So if you are a 
a gym, you know, maybe best gym in New York.com. So you want to try to get that name of your industry in there because Google will give you a little boost because of that. Yeah, that's great stuff. So um, when you start, so when people are posting content and you're talking about, you know, share a little bit about yourself, share some stories to build that personal connection. Yep. Um, how, how personal would you get? Well, I mean, I, I find that when I post a, a weird picture of myself, so the, you know, the weirder I am, the better response and feedback I get. So you, ha you have to show your personality if you really want to get results nowadays. So, you know, it's totally up to you on how far you want to go. But when I, when you start thinking about it, your natural instinct is going to be, Hey, I need to go post sales stuff. You want to try to get people to go to your website and go buy stuff. Well, that's the worst thing you can do. What you need to do is you need to post educational, professional, helpful content. Then people will remember you and buy from you when they're ready. Yeah. And that also goes for when you're making your website. It's like you say all the time, build it around and for your customer to use. Because if you fill it with stuff only about like salesy stuff, they're going to recognize that and just not trust it as much, I would say. Yep. Spot on. That's, that's totally true. And then that's, I think what we probably want to get into the next part, because you will try posting things um, and you won't get any reactions at first. Don't let that discourage you. And what I find, as long as you're posting helpful educational content, your followers, your likes, your comments, your visitors, they'll come, you know, they'll, they'll come, but try changing it up. Try posting stories, try posting helpful tips, Try posting, hey, I failed at this, and now this is what I'm doing to correct it. So things about your progress and your stories goes a long way. So we know that sharing stories or sharing a bit of personal information can build trust with your audience. Can you talk a little bit more about other benefits that I might not be thinking about when it comes to sharing personal content? People like relatable things. So if we're just talking to somebody that wants to start a business, right? But we're talking about making a million dollars a month. That's not relatable. You know, you're a hundred steps ahead of that person. But by sharing stories of, hey, when I was first starting out, I made this mistake and this is a helpful tip. So you don't make that same mistake. You're making yourself relatable making the person feel like you're on their level and you're giving them those simple tips. And it's something I struggle with because I've been doing this for almost 10 years now, digital marketing. So I know all these tactics and these, you know, complicated things you can do online, but for somebody who's just starting out or maybe just a year or two into online business, it just doesn't resonate. It's not relatable to them. So what I like to do and what you can do is share stories, whether if you're new share stories about what you've messed up and what you've done to correct it. But if you have had a business for a while and you've had clients, share stories about your client's success, what you did to help your client, because that client will be relatable to the next client. So you've got somebody maybe interested in working with you and they hear about a story of how you help someone just like them. They're much more likely to feel that that's relatable. Hey, I'm next. Right. But you just shared, right. I can do that too. Right. And what you just said sh kind of shows that it doesn't matter what kind of business you are, because if you're more of a professional, not as much of a personal brand attached to it, yep. like say it, you didn't have Brad Smith and it was just automation links, but you were trying to reach an audience through that. You can just use case studies and share client success and make it relatable, like the client, talk about where the client started and where they are now. It doesn't have to be about you per se, right? Exactly. Yep, exactly. You can make it, whether it's through your business, yourself, both, the combo. You know, now where I'm at, I can do both. But um, if I was just starting out, I would just talk about myself. Um, and then, you know, also one last thing on sharing stories. I share a lot of stories about my personal... or or my business growth, because that does go a long way. You know, I share stories of, hey, I was struggling with this. 
Um, and maybe it has nothing to do with a business tip. Maybe it has to do with a mindset tip or, hey, you know, I used to wake up at eight, but I found that once I started waking up at six a.m., I got more done. And I was more productive and I made more money. So even sharing stories like that about personal development, that's very helpful, too. Right. And it's never too late to start sharing stories. Say you've had a business for 10 years and the way marketing worked back 10 years ago is different. And now social media is a bigger part of it. So it's never too late to start because say you've been in the game for 10 years, you have probably so much wisdom. You can share it and be like, this is where I was, do like a throwback. Or you can also just be starting and say, I'm going to document the entire journey. Either way, you can still build an audience. Exactly. That actually comes to our, I think our last point of the podcast is, is it too late to pivot? Um, so we talked right. about be ready to pivot, be willing to pivot, you know, maybe a month or two in, but is two years or six months too late to pivot? Um, and I've actually done this. And it's not too late to pivot because I started online fitness and I did that for about two years. And then I pivoted to helping any type of business. Well, people would come to me and say, hey, Brad Smith, I've been watching your videos and you've been giving me tips and I'm a law firm. I, I want to hire you. So they're not going to remember you from your niche. They're going to remember you as the helpful person. And that's why, you know, we talked about hosting helpful content. They, you want them to remember you as that, not your niche. But is it too late That's to change your logo point. and your domain name? Personally, I don't, I, I feel like, well, it depends on the size. When it comes to logo stuff or branding, I think it, it, it might be harder to pivot if it's a, like say a big organization and there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. But I mean, if it's a smaller business and say you're at a point where you just want a fresher look, you want to update it with who the brand is now, I think you can do that and then just keep scaling as you go. 100%. And I always like to uh, reference famous people because that's so relatable. Mm -hmm. We got to yeah. see a relatable story. Um, if you think of Taylor Swift, you know, she started off her first album when she was 16 as a country singer. Now, everyone knew her as Taylor Swift more so than country singer. So she she was able to do that for, I don't know, 10 years. Um, and then she pivoted to a, any one singer and no one cared because they remembered her as a great singer, as a great storyteller, as a great performer. She connects with her audience. They didn't care that she went from country to pop. So, you know, I think you can think of that as your business or your, your personal brand is you can pivot, maybe don't change everything. Don't change your name, your personal name, but you can change your business name. So right. um, just think of the Taylor Swift effect. Right. And that's the last thing I think I wanted to cover with you today, Hannah, and just help people out with is be ready to wait it out. So, you know, Taylor Swift is a billionaire 20 years later. Like you're not, your company's right. not going to grow huge the first year, but set yourself up for success. Now, if you need to pivot in six months, pivot in six months, knowing you're going to be doing it for the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah. You know, be ready to pivot now and thank yourself later. That's right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, th thank, thank you, you everyone so much, for joining. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for everyone for joining the podcast today or on YouTube. We're in both places, relationship marketing podcast. And next week, we're going to cover something else to help you get to that next level from the experiences we're finding. You know, Hannah's just starting out, going from college to being a solopreneur and working for a company. I've been doing this for almost 10 years, pivoted many times. So um, we will keep sharing how you can build better relationships with your audience.